formulas that suggest that what we're leading to in this world government is that the people's ability to self-determinate will be diminished by the depth and the width of the new structure. For example, if uh, their world court is going to be in Hague and I've got a violation, I'm a legend, then I have to have the $1,500 to get a plane ticket to file, to fly to Hague to file a case. Whereas if we're under some local internet, I could go to some place nearby if law was fair, we don't even want to start mm -hmm. trying to qualify mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. because there is no law to protect a black man from a white man with a mission. Mm -hmm. There has never been a law that they ever respected that will allow us to put any amount of credibility or believability. And we're not going to sleep through that part. Right. But we're alluding to the fact that they're using these things to develop or transform. For example, if we're going to move into a world government, then we must have a world law. Well, where does world law come in? They decided that, well, we couldn't get it all at once, so we'll do it in a piecemeal faction, faction, fashion. So they went and they developed under the United Nations auspices mm -hmm. something called the Law of Sea Conference, mm -hmm. which was an international set of laws that would govern how each country would run or relate to the use of the watchers. Then they came with the Law of the Air Conference, which allowed them to differ differentiate which rights each country had or the air that stood above their particular sovereignties. Mm -hmm. In other forms, we look at the United Nations, a body, a world body of nations represented under the auspices of a set of rules. Mm -hmm. We know that this was started in 1944 after World War Number Two, mm -hmm. which we remember that after World War Number One, they had tried to establish something called the League of Nations. Mm -hmm. But at that time, this new superstructure didn't work. So they went back and retooled and reworked at this navigational plan, and they came back in the 40s with World War II and the United Nations, which was endowed by the Rockefeller family, who gave them the land, helped instrument the first uh, group of those which met, I believe, in San Francisco and signed the, the, an agreement that allowed the beginning of this world formula to develop. And these United Nations represent symbolically something coming up ahead. But every time we appeal to this thing, it never works. When Nicaragua was being bombed by the CIA in the mines and they went to the World Court and United Nations to be protected by the rule of war, they said, no, we're after Ortega. There is no law we we'll respect in trying to stop us from taking Nicaragua from the Nicaraguans, even though they had overthrown a dictator called Somoza, who America supported. Mm -hmm. Then you got another situation where you evade Panama. Here's world law. There's a world law, but they go right in and take a country because they say they're having a domestic dispute and they want to throw Noriega out. And they want to put Indara in a light skinned Panamanian who was sworn in at a military base with not one single Panamanian present. Sort of like a world police. Because to have world law, you must have world police. And let me just add to that. That's also symbolic with the United Nations peacekeeping forces which are used, the United Nations peacekeeping forces are used to police nations. And soon more power will be deposited in these policekeeping forces, which when I walk around Los Angeles and I look at some of the things that are happening here in the local area, it looks like we're being prepped here for a police state, mm -hmm. a more overt one mm -hmm. in preparation for the world police state. Many people saw 1984 and Big Brother and don't even understand how it relates to what they're doing today. Now, just if I could uh, digress just for a moment, uh, if there's going to be a uh, world court and a world police, uh, what would be the mechanism for facilitating that? And by that, I mean this. Uh, what would be a process that they could come up with such as they could centralize the economies of the world? That would mean that there would have to be a central bank mm -hmm. here in the United States. That it had to be a central banks throughout all of Europe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, could you shed some light on, on, okay. on that aspect? I think, I think that's a great question, because what you're doing is you're peeling the orange. And by peeling the orange, you're getting to the meat of the matter. If there is going to be also a world government and a world law, in a world police unit, then there must be a world centralized currency. Mm -hmm. What we're witnessing in Europe with the 
uniting of Western Europe in 1992, which looks like by 1992 will unite all of Europe, West and East, so-called East. We're seeing that they're coming up with the EU or a European currency that will be uniform such that you could go from Germany to France without having to worry about the level of the of the uh, German mark mm -hmm. uh, versus how much you get for the French whatever, mm -hmm. which, which means that this uniform currency, which had been looked at in a conference at Harvard called the Bretton Woods II Conference. Mm -hmm. You see, the money system we have now was established at a conference called Bretton Woods I, mm -hmm. which was done at the United Nations in 44, exactly. when they set up this economy based on a dude named William Keyes. Mm -hmm. Now, subsequent to that, they found that this economy became obsolete because it had to have a component that allowed it to unify the nations of the world under a monetary component that was controllable by this secret society. So they started in a piecemeal fashion to begin to come up with centralized currencies in various, various segments of the world, which would then culminate in a centralized currency. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ways they had to do this was a central banking system. If you go back and look at the origination of central banking systems, you'll see that there was a Bank of England and a Bank of France. And all around, they began to develop these banks. And in America, it was called the Federal Reserve System. Go back and look at the 1900s in the 1900s, 12, 13, 14. Look up names like Jekyll Island. Mm -hmm. Look up names like Felix Warbug and Paul Warbug. And look at the meeting that they had in those days, which came up with this meeting to come up with a central bank in America that would unite America with central banks in other countries. Mm -hmm. Then look at the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, which were then developed as part of the United Nations in the 40s. Then look at the Bank of International Settlement, which is the world central bank in Switzerland, which then leads you back up to the Paris Club, who is the keystone into controlling the IMF, the Bank of International Settlements, the World Bank and the Federal Reserve Systems, which in America have branches such as their regional Federal Reserves. For example, Chicago is the place for the regional Federal Reserve System in our region. Mm -hmm. I believe San Francisco is the is where the regional federal reserve system is for here right, right. the new york has a fed for the east coast mm -hmm. and then all of those are culminated in the big fed which is now being chaired by alan greenspan who is a trilateral commissioner as is george bush and many of those others but didn't we as taxpayers did we vote on this or when did all of this as take a place? matter of fact and that's an excellent analysis is that the federal reserve system is a quasi-governmental agency in fact, the people don't have an ounce of control over the Federal Reserve System. And one of the things that got John Kennedy killed was the first president who attempted to try to audit the Federal Reserve System. And they told him, no, you can't do that. And we witnessed how he wouldn't do it in Dealey Plaza. And, you know, Marcus, I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes I ache at who does it to us. And many times the ones who do it to us are European people. But in reality, all Europeans ain't in on it. And I say it in my lecture, all white people are not in on the program for world control, else we wouldn't have witnessed whites victimized mm -hmm. on the way to this world centralization. George Wallace wasn't a soul brother, but they shot him right down mm -hmm. and took him out of the presidential campaign where he said it wasn't a dime bit of difference between the Democrats and Republicans. And they didn't want him to be that clear. They shot Lincoln Rockwell, who was an American Nazi. They shot the Kennedy boys. They shot white students at Kent State. They watergated Nixon. They even shot Ronald Reagan in the belly. Mm -hmm. And when they shot Ronald Reagan in the belly, his wife didn't run out to the FBI or the CIA or the Naval Intelligence and get assistance in protecting Ronald Reagan. His woman turned to the horoscope lady, mm -hmm. turned to things that most people don't understand and sought direction from the stars. Why would the president's wife seek direct direction from the stars and not from the military if the president was in control of the military? And that then shows Marcus that, yes, you're right. We're not really chasing the presidents. We're chasing the hidden hand. So that means that in this process of the hidden hand, there seems to be an enforcement wing aspect to it. Now, obviously, if they shot uh, George Wallace, if they shot George Lincoln Rockwell, if they shot uh, the Kennedy brothers and Martin Luther King and, and on and on, the list goes. Uh, what type of mechanisms are used on the local levels 
that uh, uh, would facilitate this. In other words, we have an FBI, we have a central intelligence agency, that's right, that's right. but who are they reporting to? That's a very good, uh, another very, Marcus, you're coming with just great questions, but I like the depth that we're going into because actually, though both of us know this, we're saying it to the people who are in the audience who are somewhat confused because they need this information. And that's the value of this show, which should be watched by everybody all the time because they can get this type of 3D reflection. Mm -hmm. The FBI, for example, which is leading the assault on black leadership all over the country, from Dinkins in New York to the uh, Reverend Sharpton to Brother Louis Farrakhan, who's under attack by the FBI and mm -hmm. George Bush, to the little punk Mayor Bradley, mm -hmm. who's a trilateral commissioner and put his stock with the internationalists, but at the same time, they punish him when it looks like he's not delivering. They say, we want barricades on those streets. Mm -hmm. When they say, we want you to start spraying the people and he look like he's hesitating, mm -hmm. then the FBI comes out and brings his pass out. Bill Gray was under attack. Harold Washington was under attack. Judge Hastings was under attack. Andy Young had been under attack. Everywhere we have leadership, some little peon like the FBI is sent to attack us. Mm -hmm. But when I first started to do my research, I read everything about the FBI because it was coming out in the church committee hearings of 75 that they were trying to uh, uh, stop the rise of a black messiah, mm. which I thought was interesting because they weren't even out looking for a white one. Then I know that was the coin and tell pro program. Then we know there is a CIA which have been prohibited from working in domestic affairs because we remember that the mafia, the little punk white boys who were pilfering prostitution, drugs, and others were so respected by the Central Intelligence Agency that they got together and tried to go assassinate Castro who overthrew crime and prostitution in Cuba. Huh, this thing seems as though the values are upside down here. Now, the CIA, who do they report to? Get a book called The Cult of Intelligence mm -hmm. by Marx, M-A-R-K-S, and Marchetti, two Europeans who both had worked in and without of those agencies who said that the Central Intelligence Agency actually takes its orders from the Council on Foreign Relations, which has chapters in every one of the major cities in America, which allows the families, the ruling families in their areas, to meet on a local level to derive a consensus, which is then taken to New York and makes the big consensus. And this big consensus in New York allows the rich and the powerful to have that navigational plan, which is the plan used by the hidden hand. So the CIA, which Reagan and Bush put back into the community, there must be CIA running around here in Los Angeles or Long Beach and other places because Reagan said they can come back now. Mm -hmm. And so these CIA and FBI must be understood to be mere henchmen mm -hmm. of the larger program. But sometimes we think they're the boogeyman when they're just the henchmen for the boogeyman. So obviously, then, if that's the case, then we would also suspect them of you of playing both sides of the fence. For example, if there is a right wing that they would influence there would also have to be a left wing that they influence. So therefore, the so-called terrorist, whom the middle of the road would abhor, would actually be under control of this same hidden hand. They would be controlling both sides of the fence. Let's imagine that the hidden hand was the heart. We know that everybody has a left hand and a right hand. And I know that because, for example, this is my body, I control both of them. And even though I come from two different directions, both of these hands are under control of this heart. That hidden hand controls the left. Historically, you can go back, look at William Strait and the Rothschild that recently died and those others. They were always hooked into socialism and communism with the Wendell Wilkie and the mm -hmm. one world progressive mentality. Mm -hmm. And also the right wing, the little right wing folks who historically were the, uh, what was his name, who had the hearings in the 50s, McCarthy, McCarthy and others, they too, though of a different flavor, like salt and like pepper, both were ingredients. They didn't dispute things when it came to us. It was always kill the black people. Mm -hmm. But they were different flavors. They added a different style a different to this taste, body. Huh? Now, th something happened interesting. In the course of the middle 60s and 70s, 
the poor white who sometimes hangs in what is called the right wing mm -hmm. began to articulate that there was a conflict between whites. We read a book called None Dare Call It Conspiracy by a guy named Gary Allen and another book called The Rockefeller File and another book about the hidden hand and tragedy and hope. Books that were being put out by the right wing who talked about this secret society of Rhodes and Rothschild. And I ran into these books. And even though in those books they call us dirty names and communists and socialists and other demeaning things of which those whites were just too immature to bone up to that we are in essence, as like they, I saw that there was a conflict between a poor white and a rich white, and the poor white in these books were building the rationale that we'll bust your game up unless you give us a piece. So Ronald Reagan started a revolution, ran for president, damn it, three times to get in the position to get a share of the pie from the so-called Eastern establishment, mm -hmm. which was considered moderate and moderate left. So that these right wings forced an inclusion, which caused a durality called Reagan and Bush. You see, I remember when Ronald Reagan ran for president, he was anti trilateral commission. He stood up and said at his meetings, I detest the ability of some to go away and plan for the many without the many's input, mm -hmm. which he was really talking about whites. Mm -hmm. Then on the other hand, I remember when Ronald Reagan ran uh, won the nomination at the convention and all of a sudden the big question was who's going to be his vice president and i remember a little secret meeting they had with governor thompson of illinois who's a trilateral commissioner and alan greenspan who's a trilateral commissioner and henry kissinger who's a trilateral commissioner and several other key republicans gerald ford and others where they got in a room and they said ronnie we're glad you won, but now we got to break it to you, buddy. It ain't but one team that's running this world. It ain't but one team that's running America. And unless you bone up and put our man next to you, you have no opportunity to make it in this life. You can run it and you can win it, but that don't mean we're going to let you preside over it. And they said George Bush, who Ronald Reagan ran against, who said Bush, he called him voodoo economics, and they had hated each other. Ronald Reagan walked to that podium and he said, I'm proud to announce that George Bush is my vice president. And all that said to the little people was that the big boys have sat down with Ron and broke it to him. Ron, we're glad you like to come up here, but Ron, you ain't but another pump to us. And in the beginning, Ronald Reagan tried to buck this trend. Mm -hmm. He tried to go against the grain. He had Richard Allen, his national security advisor, who was in the right wing, so they just took Richard Allen and they set him up. Up in Japan, taking a little punky thousand dollars and threw him out. He wasn't talking right. Mm -hmm. And they said, Ron, we want you to be cool. They said, we want you to speak at the Trilateral Commission's meeting. In fact, Ronald Reagan was shot in 1981, March 31st, which is close to where we are now, years later, as he went to from the Washington Hilton to go speak at the noon uh, uh, Trilateral Commission meeting that was in Washington at that time. Mm -hmm. And they shot Ronald Reagan down with world leaders here from all over. They didn't kill him. They didn't even try to kill him. But they wanted to teach him a lesson. They whipped some terrorism on him to let the other whites know, if you ain't torn the line for what I call Network One, which is a euphemism for that inner circle and outer circle and all those lieutenants together in a network which has one world order as its goal, so we call them Network One, that they told Ronald Reagan, if you ain't pumping it for N.O., then you ain't pumping it, and they put them pellets in his belly. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, they ain't had no trouble out of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and that means that the whites who may not like what we say, who may not like how we say it, their butt is in just as much trouble as ours. And somehow, some way, they're going to beat the immaturity of racism. And they're going to align with people who are willing to stand up. Steve Coakley is willing to stand up against the hidden hand. For I have no other reason to live if I can't fight for the right to self-determinate. And if a white person or a European doesn't understand that his butt is in trouble too. Mm -hmm. I see those whites here in California standing up against the spring. Mm -hmm. But they thought that the spring was only for the black people. But when the spring got to them, they got their butts out there because they found out that they wasn't in on it either. Mm -hmm. And it's that reality that's got to be boned up here into America. That's why this show is so important, because unless people have it come past their doorstep, they'll misconceive who the problem is. Why would a white person chase me with no power 
and leave the one with the power in the position to keep doing what they're doing. So we've all got to bone up to the reality and deal with the nuclei or the heart of the problem. Every time we get sick, we misappropriate the remedy, mm -hmm. like breaking your foot and putting a cast on your arm. We've got to start putting the solution on the problem. And the reason they keep winning, Marcus, is because they're violent. Mm -hmm. They kick butt. They win because they kick butt. Ask Noriega, ask Maurice Bishop, ask Gaddafi, ask Reagan, ask Wallace, ask Lincoln Rockwell, ask the Kennedys. They tell you that they win because they kick butt. As we wind this down, uh, one thing I'd like to point out uh, to you, uh, Steve, is this. Uh, we seem to see this phenomena of uh, green peace throughout the world where there seems to be a recognition that the this industrial process has wreaked havoc on the environment. But one key thing that seems to come up about this process is population. We're hearing more and more, well, the reason that there's a problem because there's just too many people, the reason that there's starvation. Uh, and th this process seems to be leading us to a what we could say is a uh, population exclusion or, or, or limiting the population. Uh, you have any thoughts on that? Well, of course, you know I do. And what we're talking about is the issue of population control. Mm -hmm. And the issue of population control is best described by the fact is looked in the Global 2000 report, which was done through the United Nations, chaired by uh, uh, Willy Brandt, who was the former head of uh, West Germany, also trilateral commissioner, and had Olaf Palme on it, who was the head of Sweden, who was assassinated, as well as mm -hmm. Catherine Graham of the Washington Post and others, that this Global 2000 report said for the rich and powerful to remain influential through the year 2000, there had to be a decrease in the populations of people of color. You see, we make up the bulk of the world, and this European that we see in America aligned with other Europeans is the real minority. Mm -hmm. He has a problem of being unable to reproduce effectively where it looks like we're abundant with the ability to reproduce, which I think is a God-given ability. And here we are in a position where we're unable to do for ourselves such that one has decided that this becomes a problem to their ability to succeed, that too many of us running around could one day lead in a revolt. Too many unsatisfied cause a problem later. Therefore, they got into population control techniques. In fact, in the recent issue of Foreign Affairs magazine, which is put out by the Council on Foreign Relations and should be read by us, though it's laborious, it needs to be translated. In the current issue on their world review, in it there is a discussion or an ad rather by a company called Negative Population Growth Incorporated. How could you have negative growth? And it appears as if that this negative growth, that this negative growth is a contradiction. Negative Growth Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And this ad talked about that we're willing, this corporation, to make the decisions necessary to get the ideal amount of population in America. Now, as I walk around this West Coast and I see those Hispanic areas and I see those black areas, I see someone then coming in and looking at them and saying, nah, too many of them here, too much concentration, too much concentration. Hey, maybe if they ride again, they won't burn their own communities. Maybe they'll come downtown and mess with our things. Mm -hmm. Hey, cut that population size down. Hey, how about a little abortion? Put them pills in their neighborhood. Give them abortions and make it readily available. Hey, how about giving them some ethnic weapon? How about developing a weapon where we could drop it in the middle of a population and it'll only attack people with melanin in their skin? Hey, how about AIDS? How about closing their hospitals so when they need infant care, they need uh, 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 the care for the woman in the nine months of pregnancy. Hey, how about cutting it down so we can increase that infant mortality? Why not close their hospitals? Hey, instead of giving them bread at a reduced rate, let's give it to the Russians so they can eat. After all, they're our white brother. Mm -hmm. Let's let the white brotherhood live. Let's kill those other people. Couldn't one person stand up and tell me that these policies that we're affected by in America is not genocide. And don't tell me you won't kill a race of people because to take America, you already did. They killed that Native American and they played it back to us that they were savages and they scalped the people just like they're trying to label our youth. 
like something that is expendable. Yeah, they're heathens. They're they're the drug problem. They're the gang problem. Mm -hmm. Identifying and labeling them, but the labeling process is the pre-step to extermination. They labeled Gaddafi a mad dog. They labeled Noriega cone face. They label, they try to label Steve Copley and Louis Farrakhan and others as anti-Semitic when actually they're not even Semites, those who call us those names, who pretend to be so-called Jewish people, because they are not. They are imposters. And what we're looking at, Marcus, is the impersonation of things that are important, that are confusing the people. And I can say for a fact that we're standing up and we're not going to take it anymore. Thank you very much for that uh, excellent analysis. Uh, sorry, we're getting close to running out of time, but uh, I guess in conclusion, Steve, uh, we could say that uh, there seems to be a, uh, that which operates on the international level also operates on a local level. And that value system that comes from that level is, uh, manifests itself somehow in 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 uh, the local level what we see the spraying the the blockades the gang situation the education the health and that seems the way it goes so this is marcus lewis and i'd like to thank you very much brother steve coakley i'd like to thank you brother marcus for having me and we know that our job is to draw that beast out of the cave into the light so they could be seen by everyone and we know like dracula the beast can't work in the daylight Thank you. This has been World African News. Free Africa, free Africans at home and abroad. Free Africa, once we were kings and queens, yes, I know now. Remember that we owe, oh, oh, da, 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 oh, da, da, da. At home and abroad, free Africa. Free Africa at home and abroad, free Africa. Civilization was only given a how created by the father in a positive mind. We can't conquer to take our way, so I like to work and keep a little play. No free Africa. Africa. Free Africans at home and abroad. 